Well, hello there, my dear friends. Welcome back to the Scott Bree Project. And yes, it's turkey time. It's that time of year where the good old turkey gets its comeuppance. Hmm. For want of a better word. Uh, so what I want to do then, we can all roast a turkey. I want to do something a little different. I want to make a boneless turkey crown, but I want to stuff it with a homemade sausage made from the remnants of the turkey. So I've got a five kilo turkey here. To start the proceedings, I just want to take the wings off. Now, of course, when we take all these bits off, you can save them if you don't want to put them into a sausage, but I just think it would be nice to use some of the meat inside the stuffing. So, as with any poultry, snap out the legs, make sure you get that oyster on this turkey, it's quite a big one, one there. Now I'm working with a fresh frozen one. That's why it's a little bit sloppy. It's took forever to defrost, but what we're left with already is just our basic crown, which we'll put over there. Our legs, which, let's give this a wipe. I'm going to split into drumsticks and thighs. Now the drumsticks, always my favourite. I always add the leg. Always do still have the leg. And then we're left with this wonderful thigh. So just skin it. It's not muck about, Scott. Get on with it. And just take out that bone. Very simple. As we all know, like a pheasant, turkey has loads of sinews in the drumstick. But I don't mind that. Depending on how much meat we get off these thighs and thing, we may break down the turkey drumsticks. If not, we'll do something with those to go with our lovely stuffed turkey crown parcel so just tracing the thigh bone nice and simple and again take the skin off pull and then that will go towards our stuffing so what we got got our meat for our sausages, two drumsticks, our crown which we're going to bone out, the wings, who doesn't like a wing? Get through that joint, and that one there. So it's safe to say, this little four or five kilo turkey has yielded so far quite a lot of meat. Right, we got this to play with. Wings, drumsticks. That's for our sausage meat, but next we need to deal with this crown because this is going to be the main part of our stuffed turkey parcel. Give the knife a little feddle. So we just want to take this off the bone. Really simple now, we've got rid of the wings and the drumsticks, so nice and gentle, just finding that rib cage, just with the tip of the knife. No rush. There is no need to rush. And like I say with a lot of my butchery videos, 
if you get a little nick in the skin it doesn't matter we'll just cover it in bacon it's like the ultimate meat plaster no one can see so just loosen it off round the back and then we go past the shoulder blades always a bit of a ball like the shoulder blade catches you out that's that bit there and then we find this rib cage here now I'm going to make my own sausage meat incorporating the thigh I just thought it would be a nice idea but by all means you know you can go and buy a decent sausage meat and use that for your stuffing so we're coming to the important part just over that breastplate now how are we looking here let's get rid of that you pretty much want it hanging on and then use your thumbs make sure you loosen off the back and it can if you're lucky just if you can see that there pull off a carcass like that that should leave us with our lovely little crown boneless crown so take off any of those bits and of course just going to open that up bloody fly in December die so this is what we got to play with then beautiful boned out crown two drumsticks two drumettes two wings and the boneless thighs so like I said I'm gonna make a little bit of sausage meat so I've got some pork here and what I'm gonna do first of all is just make up some sausage meat with this thigh meat obviously we're not gonna use it all but you can always roll it into balls or put it in a tin wrap it in bacon put it in a tin and bake it in the oven take it to the table and cut through it so to my stuffing I will be adding some beautiful sweated half onions and some fresh sage. Also, I will be adding breadcrumbs. I'm gonna add the rusk we use for sausage making, but by all means use breadcrumbs, absolutely perfect. And then we'll season it up with some salt and pepper, roll a little ball, try it. When it tastes amazing, we will put it into the breast, right sausage meat so as we all know then turkey is super super lean hardly any fat on but the little bit of fat you do get will be on these thighs but to make my sausage meat i want to weigh this off what have i got there can't see just under a pound and a half so to make these nice juicy and textured, we're going to add a pound and a half of shoulder, pork shoulder. Definitely the best for sausage making. You've got just that right amount of fat and it's the good fat. Absolutely ideal for making sausages. So you can see, I'm just skinning out really close to the skin so I'm picking up all that beautiful fat if you can see there that is pure gold so want to make it big enough to go through the mincer as you can see look knife horizontal just give it a shimmy and you can get all that goodness off and repeat with all your bits until you've got your pound and a half. As you can see then, I've got 
just over two pounds and I'm going to use that, I'm going to go with that because that will actually give us a classic sausage making weight, three and a half pounds. So what I need to do then is get all that through the mincer and then we'll add all our other tings. Perfect. So I don't want to be teaching me grandmother to suck turkey eggs, but obviously dealing with poultry, you want to keep your workstation tickety-boo. Right, let's just whack this through the mincer. And as they say down in Somerset, proper job. Right, now we need to add all the goodies to make this wonderful sausage meat. Right, because we have our standard mix of sausage meat, three and a half pound of meat, we can add our half a pound of rusk, by all means, use breadcrumbs and I'm not even going to soak this yet because this is quite wet as it is and of course we're going to be adding our onions now the seasoning like I said add salt and pepper add any herbs you want add a little bit of a thyme make a little ball try it Remember, you can always add, you cannot take away. So that's just a preliminary mix. But what I'm going to do is add my favourite seasoning. Cheating? Yes, you better believe it. And then I'm going to put in my sweated down onions. I may add a bit more of those. Let's just get that mixed up. As you can imagine, this smells absolutely fantastic, beautiful. And this will go through the mincer one more time and just make it a little finer. What a beautiful looking thing that is. So next then, we've got to get some fresh sage in. I've got some leaves there. So we just start with that many. Remember sage, super, super powerful. One of my favorite herbs, one of the herbs I use the most of, sage and thyme. I think you can't beat them. They're just brilliant. And of course, sage and Christmas go together like turkey and stuffing. That don't make sense. I'm high on life, baby. Right, just giving it a little fettle. Get on there, you beauty. And then we can put some into our mix. So there we have basically the classic flavors of the stuff in the sage, the onion and the breadcrumbs, but we've pimped it up with homemade sausage meat, incorporating the turkey. I think I need a little bit more sage in there, a little few more flecks. You know, it's a visual thing as well. You can see there's plenty of onion. The meat, obviously, we know. Oh, wow. So, give my Danny's a wipe. And we'll put in those last few leaves. Just talk amongst yourselves, my friends. Should we have a bit of music? Okay, I'm happy with that. 
I'm going to add just a little bit of liquid just to take this down. But first, I'm going to get it back through the mincer. God, I can't stop smelling it, man. It ain't never right. But if you have a look at that mix, if I can get that for you, can you see the onion, the sage? Winner, winner, turkey dinner. Okay, let's go round again. I miss my vocation, man. That's more like it. Add a spot of water, give it a mix. It's done. While you beautiful human beings, I've just fried off a little bit of that mix. And yes, all those food Nazis out there, I have cleaned the knife. Okay, so. Mm. Tell you what that means. A little bit of Coleman's. See if I've got any. Ah, oh, yeah. It's like the Russian doll of Coleman's mustard. Oh, I have a word. Hey? It's a terrible job. You fancy trying a bit of that? Can you get that? Eh? What's it look like? Mm. Wow. Oh. Balls to the turkey. Let's just eat this with mustard. Oh, man. Sublime. That is the mutts nuts, the dog's danglers, the turkey's testicles. Right. Whew. Let's get on and finish this. I put my very small tin of Coleman's away. Look at the size of that bad boy. Said the actress to the bishop. Oh, the fun we have here on the SRP. So, we've got our little turkey crown. We're gonna put a big glob, is the official term, in the middle. So hopefully, when you cut a slice, you'll get a nice piece of stuffing. The rest, like I said, you could do in a tin, or even do your pigs in blankets out of it. But that, to me, is perfect. Put the shape back into that straight away. Next, we need to cover it in the finest invention ever. Smoke streaky bacon. So, just stretching out my streaky. Now if I add more, I would actually do a lattice pattern. But unfortunately, this is all I got left because I've been making pigs in blankets, man. Right. Bearing in mind now, this is a complete solid piece of meat filled with that wonderful sausage meat. And this is only to protect it, but obviously you can eat it. So what I will do is when I roast it, 30 minutes before the end, just take this bacon off, eat the bacon, because that's what you do. and then brown up that lovely skin. Right, tie time. Not too tight. So as per usual, and my pheasant, my three bird roast, just taking the knot to the meat as soon as it holds, leaving it, tying it. And we go along. And we just do that. A 
And what I do, just spin that round and just put a very, very loose one to hold that stuffing in from the neck end. You may get a bit of spillage, such is life. It's no big deal, you just eat it. So very, very gentle knot, hardly any pressure on that. And it will all come together as you add some more strings. And just one on that neck end, but very, very gently. to hold it tie it off and there we have our lovely burn list stuffed from our soul to beak of that wonderful sausage meat so we'll get that in our tray ready to cook first we need to deal with those drummers Ah, the ubiquitous turkey drumstick full of sinews. What we need to do is that. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This is a little bit of work, but it makes all the difference. I mean, I've always had leg, like I said earlier. I don't mind it, but yeah, it's a bit of a ball ache. So, basically, I'm going to... French trim it, so if you can see I've made a cut and it'll expose the sinews. we just get that end of the hoof off, the hoof, the foot. And as you can see, if you put your knife in, you can start to pull these. So, just cutting over the end, and I can pick those up now, those ones there, as you can see. You're just going to have to get your pliers, get a good grip of it, and pull and they will come out and there's quite a few of them just take your time and before you know it you've got them and it makes all the difference you know you take this to the table you've got that lovely crown and everybody looks at the drumsticks and goes oh no but you've already done a number on them and they are perfect so just French trimming them down, doesn't matter if you lose a little bit. And then the butcher's best friend, the wet brag. I don't know what it is about it, but it's like got the grip of 20 men. That pulls that off there, pliers. And I know it seems like a lot of work, but it really really is worth it. I mean, that's all the crap we've had out of them. So all we do now is hold and push and then any sinews that are left will pop up their little heads. Like that one there. Get a grip. Get a grip, man. And that one there. Got the little monkey. <laughs> So, just continuing to tidy up. Little bits of funk on the end. There's our drummers. Like I said, you might not get them all, but you'll get most of them. Just that little bit of work. And then these drumettes. Just French trimming these up. So when you cook them, all the meat We'll fall to the bottom of the bone, it'll look like a lollipop. So again, it's just tidying up. Nothing too fancy. Again, another favourite part of mine, the wing. Okay, so we'll get these in our tray. Now you could put the other wing bits in if you'd like. Just on there, but this is ready to go in to the oven. 
So just to jazz it up a bit then, I put a couple of meat bands around there just to hold those drumsticks up. I put the wings in the bottom, but that is looking pretty cool. I don't know which way to have these. My OCD is kicking in. Hmm. Anyway, let's cook it. Okay, my friends, the moment we've all been waiting for. Just have a look at that. Hey, how good does that look? Absolutely cooked to perfection. Now, what I did then is preheated my oven to 190 degrees C. I'll put the conversion up there. And I gave this 70 minutes per kilo and then 20 minutes on top. All in all, this took two hours to cook, half hour before the bird had finished cooking. I removed the bacon. I don't know what's happened to that bacon. It seems to have disappeared. And then I put just the breast back in. I removed these legs because they were cooked just for it to brown off. So, 100, 190 degrees, 70 minutes a kilo, 20 minutes over, and then you get something that looks a little like this. There's a bit of a drumstick missing as well. I mean, this has had some serious trauma, this turkey. It's got no bacon left. There seems to be like a big turkey goblin thief around here. Hmm, wonder who it could be. Get rid of that piece of string there. So, our drumsticks. I mean, there's even a drumette missing. What's all that about? I mean, there's the one, and then there's like that. Hmm. Oh, these just need nibbling on, don't they? These wonderful, wonderful wings. Look at that. So all in all then, two hours to cook. All done absolutely perfect. I probed it. It's 72 degrees C. But we need to have a look at it, don't we? I mean, just look at it. Hey, how juicy is that? Oh, man. Now, I'm not just saying this, but that was like the juiciest wing I have ever eaten. And the beauty of doing it like this, as you notice, it was all one height. So the heat was hitting it all together, not like a bit of breast stick up here and like a bit of thigh here. It was all having the same amount of heat. But the proof is in the pudding when we cut into this beautiful, get the right knife, stuffed crown. Okay, let's just cut in half to start with, just so we can have a glimpse of what that looks like. And we better bring the camera down for this. Doesn't that look summing? Look at the moisture. We'll just press on that look. That's that beautiful stuffing has really, really helped keep that nice and juicy. Held together, absolutely perfect. Just look at it. Oh yeah. So that little bit of work, that little bit of fiddling is yielded an almighty, beautiful turkey. Bit of bank. I'm lost for words. It's absolutely superb. It's just a thing of beauty. You can have a look at that. I want to look at that lovely sausage meat stuffing. Can you get that? I can. Mm. It's safe to say 
that is the way forward. Let's have a look at one of them drumsticks, look. Hey, look at that. Absolutely perfect. Oh man, stop it. No sinews in the drum stickler. Hey, how good is that? I know it looks messy, but that is just proof that there was no sinews in it. Well, my festive friends, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Scott Ree Project. It's safe to say, you know, if you can, if you feel you can do this and you can, give this a go with your turkey. Absolutely superb. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen here on the SRP, please click my face when it comes up down here and subscribe to the channel. Also, click that, obviously, festive bell to get all the notifications of all my future videos. Oh, excuse me. Also, check me out on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at the Scott Ree Project. Also, if you feel like sharing the love, check out my Patreon page. But it's safe to say that this was a 110% success. Hey, eh? How good does that look? I think we should finish up with a gratuitous, sexy, slow-mo slice. Take care, my friends. <laughs> <laughs>